New Horizons, giving us our first glimpses of Pluto. Curiosity, making amazing discoveries on Mars. The Voyager probes, going further than anything ever built by humans. And all of them are made possible by a super fuel known as plutonium-238. Plutonium-238 is a special isotope of plutonium that when it decays, it gives off a lot of energy and we are able to harness that energy and convert it to electricity so it can be used on deep space missions. But NASA is running out of this very rare fuel. They have only enough for maybe two or three more missions. We haven't made any new plutonium-238 since the late 1980s. I think that new plutonium production is absolutely important to the future of deep space exploration. Enter Ken Wilson and Chris Jensen. It's their job to help make a new supply of this highly radioactive isotope in this heavily shielded work area. This is a hot cell. The window on it's about four feet thick. There are four panes of leaded glass in it. Around the windows, you have a high density concrete wall. All that you see out here is to protect us from the high radiation environment inside. Chris and Ken's day involves using robotic manipulator arms to reach into the hot cell to play with a real life chemistry set of neptunium and plutonium. When you first start, it's pretty awkward, but uh, as you get kind of accustomed to it and the better you get at it, uh, they, they really kind of become an extension of your own arm. I mean, you just start not even thinking about what you're doing, you're just doing it automatically. When you're working with highly radioactive materials, it's kind of a crapshoot. The normal chemistry that, uh, that's, that you know about doesn't always work the same way. It's fun and you'll have it in the back of your mind that you're one of the few people in the world that gets to handle a lot of this stuff. Today's just another day with radioactive materials in the hot cell. With rovers and spacecraft in deep space, the challenge is making sure they have enough power to operate. At those far reaches of the solar system, solar panels aren't much help. The farther you get from the sun, you just can't make the kind of electricity that you need it's just too far away. So the Department of Energy created the MMRTG, Multi-Mission Radioisotope Thermoelectric Generator. It's a nuclear power system. When plutonium-238 decays, it gives off heat, which the generator turns into electricity. NASA is already making decisions about its future missions, and until we have new material and an assurance that we can make new material, we can't plan missions like that. So, it's here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory that they're working on that much-needed supply. I'm going to take this over here to the right and put the outlet tube into it. Neptunium-237 goes into the nuclear reactor and comes out partially converted into plutonium. That's when things really heat up in the hot cell. Chris gets to shake for a while. I tell you, when I first started on these things, I was going home sore forearms for the first three, four days. Your, your arms get sore from squeezing and bending in ways that they're not used to. Working together using the manipulator arms, they take the material that's been exposed to radiation, boil it in nitric acid, and remove any undissolved solids. That leaves them with a purified version of plutonium-238. Interesting, different, and it's a challenge every day. You gotta figure out how to do something that you could easily do with your hand, knowing that you only have two fingers to handle something with. You, you, hold, you hold it and let me see if I can spin it. You're only operating one arm, and you gotta work with your teammate who's gotta figure out how to do the other half of a job that you could usually do on your own. It really, it's basically you gotta be pretty dang good with manipulators because you're handling a lot of equipment in the hot cell that uh, it's not you know, robust, it's some of it's pretty fragile, and you don't wanna break it, you don't wanna spill anything, so uh, the better you're at handling the manipulator, the better you are at handling the material. Yeah. From here, the plutonium-238 is taken to another lab where it's pressed into fuel pellets for use on the nuclear power generator. This is just the beginning of a plutonium production process that's expected to last years. And the importance of this project is not lost on Chris. Kind of just dawned on me one day that what we're producing is gonna end up potentially getting delivered to another planet as a power source. And you know, knowing that you're one of the few people that got your hands on something that was used to send to a foreign planet. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a cool feeling. 